Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy. In this video, we will be solving example uh, related to the finite element method because previously what we have seen and what we have discussed is about the general steps uh, that is in the finite element method. So now we will be taking a differential equation and we will trying to solve it with the help of the finite element method uh, by specifying the general and the mandatory things. So let's start. So we want to solve this differential equation uh, with the help of the finite element method and this differential equation is the special case of the differential equation that we have seen differential equation that we have seen in the steps of the finite element method because here a the small a that we have seen in the previous videos is specified as minus one uh, you can compare it by yourself and the force uh, small f here is minus x square because usually the force was on the other side of the equation, that's why it's minus x square in this differential equation. So to, be to better understand, you have to compare it with the general differential equation that we have discussed earlier in the finite element method steps. So here is a differential equation, and the domain is from 0 to 1. There are two boundary conditions that we have. The first one is that the displacement at the first end is equal to zero and the other boundary condition is displacement at the other end is also equal to zero so displacement at both ends of the domain is equal to zero which implies that the bar is fixed from both of the ends here there is no displacement on both of the ends and the target is to find uh, the displacement vectors u basically uh, and how we can find the displacement vectors if we don't know how many elements are in there uh, in this bar. So, or, and it should be linear as well. So, we have to divide the bar in four elements, into four linear elements, and we have to find the displacement on each of those ends, right? So, let's um, specify this general bar with these uh, four element system. Here is our bar and both ends are fixed which implies that u at 0 is equal to 0 and u at 1 is equal to 1 is equal to 0 as well. So this is the first node, this is the second node, this is the third node, fourth node and the fifth node. These nodes are in the full coordinate system, right? And how many elements do we have? This is the first element, the second element, the third element, and the fourth element as per the question, right? So this is the question that we have. Now we are going to solve it uh, to find the u, to find the displacements on each of these nodes, right? In on all of these five nodes. So let's start the solution. First of all, we know that the length of each element matters a lot. Uh, because in order to put in the stiffness matrix, in order to find the stiffness matrix, in order to find the force vector, it is really important to know the h, the length for each element. So as we know, this is the zeroth uh, x, and this is the f x is equal to 1. So if there are four linear elements, then the length for each element should be 0.25, right, units. 0.25 here, this is the 0.25, right? And this is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.75, and this is 1, right? So the length for each element is 0 0.25. And we know the general structure for the stiffness matrix uh, that we have seen in the previous videos. So let's write it down here for the stiffness matrix uh, for the element level. And xA and xB right here, uh, the one, the first end and the second end, because this is the x-axis. So we have psi, uh, that is also known as the shear function we have discussed in the previous videos. The link of all of the previous videos will be in the card and will be in the description. So here the x bar is showing that we are in the local area here. So this is for the element level, which implies that we are on the local level. Psi i and psi j are the shear functions for the element levels for a particular element. So this is how we can find the stiffness matrix for each of the element. Now the now the point here that all of these elements, all of these elements are linear, and the stiffness matrix, the structure of the stiffness matrix would be the same for each of these elements 
big in the structure because we have the shear function the shear functions won't change at each end plus the length of the element is also same the length of each element is 0.25 and there is no difference in the length of each element that's why the stiffness matrix for each element for example if we find the stiffness matrix for e1 the first element that will be the same for e2 because here we are in the local system so in local level this would be 0 and this would be 0.25 again for the e3 we are in the local system this point would be 0 this point would be 0.25 and so on so that is the very positive and the beneficial point for the stiffness matrix is that we can uh, solve it by going into the local level and just elevate them because there is no difference there is symmetry in the stiffness matrix so let's solve it for the element level one before going into this we have to recall this psi one and side of the shear functions because the shear function is one minus x bar by uh, the length of each element so x one minus x bar divided by 0.25 and here this would be x bar by 0 0.25 right so this is psi one and this is psi two we just what we are going to do we're just going to plug it there and we are going to take the derivative of each of the side one because if we want to take the derivative of this it would be the it would be zero minus um one by 0.25 and this would be one by 0.25 so this would be the derivative uh for this shape function one and for the shape function two and this would be the shape function one and two we were uh, we have just plug the values in here take the integration so after plugging the values and taking the integration the output would be so that would be the stiffness matrix for each of the element and this is this would be the same for all of uh, the elements Be uh, why because all of these elements are sharing the same a uh, initial stiffness c that is minus one and uh, and the length for each interval so this is same the stiffness is same for the all element so this is the stiffness matrix for each of the element again this is in the local coordinate system we have to assemble them lately uh, to elevate them into the global system but this is the main structure for the element level one we are just going to write it uh, on the side in order to use it later now we are going to find out the force vector the first thing that we have done here we have solved the stiffness matrix for each element level we'll talk about the force vector in the next video that how we can find the force vector for each element and is it possible to solve the force vector just like the stiffness matrix on the local coordinate system or we have to train the technique so this is for now like for more such videos then you can subscribe to this channel to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye